Please, come on. Why? No. No. In my last video, I said, making games is hard, but I guess I'm a sucker for punishment because this time we're doing multiplayer. So where did this ridiculous idea come from? I've been playing a lot of Super Auto Pets lately. It's a beautiful little auto battler where you buy animals and build a team and then enter them in a battle against another random player. You are fighting real players, but all the action plays out automatically. And then after each round, you go back and buy more animals and try and make your team better and better. As well as doing damage and having health, each individual animal also has a unique ability and is coming up with interesting ways that these abilities work together that is really the meat of the game and helps you make really interesting teams. So I was lying in bed one night and I couldn't sleep because, you know, their systems are collapsing. Economic global shutdown. Catastrophic climate change outcomes. But anyway, I had this thought pop into my head. What if instead of coming up with a team of animals, I was building a slot machine to duel against another player's slot machine? I'd have to buy different items and load them into the reels and have to come up with synergies that work with lots of different combinations. Which led to, what if instead of just a slot machine, the slot reels were the cylinders of a revolver? So it would be like an old school gun duel, except combined with gambling. I wrote all of this down into the notes app while I was in bed and I even had this incredible piece of concept art. So to get started, I figured the best thing I could do is go buy a gun. And luckily in Australia, guns are really cheap and easy to buy. Ah, here we go. This is what we're after. And you know what, you may have laughed at that bit of concept art, but check this out. I think that's basically perfect. So now that I know how a gun works, we can finally get started. For something like this, before I even think about opening Unity and making the game, I want to lay it all out visually and get an understanding of what I need to present to the player and how it's going to look. There's a lot of information that needs to be conveyed very quickly and simply, so I think this saves a lot of time in the end. You can see the idea a little bit better here. So we have three items. They all have different abilities, which isn't shown here, but you can see the firepower, which is basically how much damage it will do, represented by the number in the flame. They also have bullets, so that's how much ammo they have, how many times you can use it. My idea here was that you would have some items that would do heaps of damage or do really good effects, but you wouldn't get many uses of them. So you'd always be having to replenish and restock your ammo. All right, now we can finally open Unity and get started on this thing. I decided to make it in 3D just because I'm kind of more familiar with that, weirdly. I actually find it easier than doing it in 2D. I have a lot of experience animating UI in 3D and I just think it looks cool. It makes it look less like a low pixel indie game, even though it's very clearly an indie game. And I can stub out the revolver with just some very basic primitives just to get the idea for now. Next up is getting the cylinders to spin. This is going to be a big part of the game, so it's pretty important to get it looking good. I tried to do it with math and then realized I had no idea what I'm doing, so I used some really tricky hack way using a bunch of animation curves instead. Next up, we just need some items uh, and need to build this in a way that's going to not make our life terrible later on. So this took longer than I would have thought. And then we copy paste that whole thing across and hey, we have the beginnings of what looks like a game. You notice here that I'm doing a lot of work and playing a lot of time lapses before there's really anything to play. One of the problems with this game is you need to do so much work setting everything up before there's anything even vaguely close to being fun. In the last game, Sir Truck, you could play and drive around kind of on the first day and the whole time, the whole way through the game, you were always able to play it. As a developer, this is scary. This could be a lot of work and then right at the end, the game is just no good. I'm reminded of the famous car versus skateboard diagram where it's better to deliver iteratively where you have something functional at least along the way. Whereas with the car, you just have an axle and now even after a whole week, that's all we have, just an axle and some random parts. So I guess we just keep on going for now. We've got the items, we just need to make them all work now. So first, I animate the firepower counting up. When the gun fires, it does the sum of all the firepower. So I wanted to animate that to make that clear. Also, these animations need some work. I also think it didn't look quite right having the UI animate up like that. 
So I tried messing around with integrating that into the actual gun itself. I don't know, coming out the end, that's where the damagey bit comes out of guns, right? The hurty part? I decided this would be a good time to replace my just squares making up the pistol with this low poly free mesh I found on some website. So I kind of hacked that into place. And then next we need fingers. And I don't know why, but like modeling fingers is gross, but not as gross as if you look at the backside of the model It's just, it is, you're not meant to see that part. So it's fine. But with a little bit more work, everything's looking pretty good now. The next thing to finally get Can you chickens be less noisy, please? I'm trying to record. <sighs> okay, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the items need to have abilities now. Like the ability that chickens have to... I did some truly terrible things in co-routines to get this working. But after a little bit of fussing around, I finally settled on having lightning bolts kind of jump between items to show that something was happening. I also made the items eject themselves when they ran out of ammo. And now finally, finally, we can put this all together as a single sequence where both players roll their items, all the abilities execute, all the firepower counts up, and then finally they shoot at each other and do some damage. Just don't look too closely at some of the code here. And here it is all put together. We finally have two pistols. They both have items, all of the abilities execute. It all plays out just nicely. But so far, this isn't a game. You don't actually do anything as a player. Because at the end of the day, the actual gameplay here is in the shop. That's where your real agency lies, where you're able to make decisions and decide how well you're going to do in the auto battling part. So just like before, it's back to the drawing board. Let's do a plan for how this shop's going to look. There's so many weird little decisions here. Like how much money do you start with? How much do the items cost? How many different items are there for you to select from? There's so much here. And like I said, this is kind of the meat of the game. And then once again, there's nothing to do but just make the thing. There's no shortcuts here. You just have to grind it out and get to work. Or I guess there's like one shortcut, which is just watch someone else do it in a time lapse. And then boom, it only takes like 10 seconds. I was pretty sick of looking at the blank background while I was doing this though. So I jumped on Midjourney, which is an AI art generator. I plugged in a few terms and now I have a background, I guess. I mean, it's just all blurred out, but it just gives a little bit of detail and depth to the scene. And now finally, I can actually do something in the game. I can buy items and refresh the shop. And I mean, you know, it's not interesting, it's not good, but I'm at least I'm doing something. And so now you might think, ah, oh, we're so close. We're so close to the game being playable and interesting to watch. And if I got news for you, no, there is a long road ahead. So I think you know what time it is. Montage time. So we're not done quite yet, but we're well on our way now. We have a lot of the things we want to be able to do in the shop. We can buy items, sell items, freeze them so we can save them for later. We can re-roll the shop. There's a lot of stuff here. The main thing that's missing now is we need some actual items. The stuff that's in right now is just pure placeholder garbage. There's also an enemy we can play against, but it's just a totally randomly generated enemy by the computer. For all the items, I think it makes sense to kind of lean into the slot machine aspect and do, you know, all of the fruit symbols, the poker symbols, the lucky seven, at least as a starting point, and then we can kind of get weirder with it later. I also need to plan out what all of the abilities are and how they're going to interact with each other. So some really simple ones might be every time an item gets rolled, it gets more powerful. 
So then, you know, it's kind of an investment to build up to it. Other pretty simple examples would be one that's rolled that has like not much power on its own, but multiplies the power of the other items. And then the next step is items that interact together, but only with specific types. So we might have a hippo that eats all of the fruit when you buy it. So you sacrifice all these items, but you get a really powerful hippo. And that becomes an interesting strategic playoff. To get the art done quickly, I'm grabbing a whole bunch of icons from the Noto Sans Google Emoji Pack. And this way I can just blow through getting the art done really quickly. I just run it through a really simple process in Pixelmator just to make it look a little bit more unique and blend with the game itself. And now we really are close. It's not long until I'll be able to give this to people to play and test out. So it needs a main menu and we need a place where you can put in your name. I've done playtesting before, even with a friends and family playtest where people really like to put in naughty words as their names. And then it's a huge pain because I have to censor it out whenever I'm using it in a video, like in this one. So I added a profanity filter. I mean, just a really, really basic one. Yeah, it works okay, but you know, it doesn't filter out all of the nasty words, that's for sure. Now, I can't put it off any longer. I have to actually get this thing multiplayer. Like that's the whole point all along, right? This is probably not gonna come as a surprise, but I am not a multiplayer engineer. I've worked on multiplayer games before, but I sure as hell haven't gone anywhere near the code for it. Luckily for this game though, the multiplayer is really simple. All you're really doing is every time you end your turn, you push your turn up to a database and at the same time, you pull down randomly one of the other player's turns. So there's not really any synchronization issues. It's really just a glorified database. That being said, this is still a really daunting task for me. I'm using AWS to try and store and access my database. And I mean, you know, AWS is what smart people use. I have no idea what I'm doing. Just getting it to send and receive basic data is a huge challenge for me. After a couple of days of messing around and learning, I actually get it managing to pull down a player's name for me and like this is just totally a console message but you have no idea how stoked I was when this happened. I was so pleased. And now all of a sudden th there is a game because now the multiplayer is working. I'm actually playing myself like as I'm testing the game I'm pushing up entries and then I can play them later on. And it's like literally all of a sudden gone from I'm just throwing in random items to I'm trying to beat myself, trying to play against myself and the game has just all of a sudden come to life. I shared a video of my progress on a game development Slack channel. One of the comments I got was that the ammo was really not clear, that the icon didn't make any sense. So I spent a bit of time trying to come up with a better icon and then after a while I thought, hang on, what if we just got rid of ammo completely? This is one of those features that had been there since the very first day of design, but honestly it wasn't quite working. It always felt like things had too much ammo or not enough, it just felt impossible to balance. And once I removed it, oh, it just felt so much cleaner and simpler, much easier to read what was going on. And I could still have items that would eject themselves after using themselves once or get more or less powerful. So the kind of principle and spirit of the ammo was still there anyway. And now we just need more items again. And I just keep playing the game over and over and over and over, just trying to roughly get everything into balance. Make sure nothing seems super overpowered, nothing seems completely useless. I know when I give this to real players, they're gonna break it instantly, but I need to at least give it my best shot right here. The last design feature I wanted to test out was betting on the outcome. I got this idea from watching streams of Super Auto Pets. And often it would be like really fun to try and guess in advance whether you were going to win or lose the round. Holy cow, this team is gonna keep me alive. <laughs> All that stuff I said about winning, uh, I take it back. Never mind, we're the best team ever. I stick with that. Holy cow. Of course, there's a healthy dose of luck here, so it doesn't massively change the game. You just get a little bit of an advantage if you guess correctly. So you get some weird decisions where, you know, do you bet on yourself? Do you bet against yourself? 
that's pretty neat. One of the last minor but obvious additions is just a bit of a muzzle flash for the pistol. I tried making this with a mesh and uh, it just does not seem to work. I don't know, this is just, I couldn't quite get it looking right. So I completely cheated and just made it a static image that kind of vaguely looks like it could either be one or two muzzle flashes that pops up on the screen. And then there's a little smoke effect as well for afterwards, just to really help seal the deal. And now the moment of truth actually give this to some other players so that they can absolutely destroy me in a multiplayer game. I set up a Discord with some friends and family and everyone started playing the game. And it was great. Immediately it was so much more interesting playing against actual people. Who would have thought? And some people had some truly inventive builds that I never would have thought of. Also, I got so much great feedback so much stuff through the playtesting process that I learned about the game and I did heaps of updates constantly changing and balancing the items, changing the UI around, clarifying things. This really made the game come into its own. One of the really interesting challenges that comes with balancing a multiplayer game is just how many moving parts there are and I think the fox really well illustrates this. So the way the fox works is every time it gets rolled, if at that moment you have less health than the enemy, the fox gets a permanent buff. I thought the fox seemed really cool and no one was really using it, so I kept on buffing it up and up and making it a little bit more powerful. And really, like, it still wasn't getting much attention. Later on in another update, I added an item called the hospital. Now the hospital doubles how much health bonus you get whenever you apply a health bonus. And so when I added the hospital, all of a sudden, the entire game was getting overrun with box builds. Everyone was buffing up their health, and so other players were realizing this, realizing they could avoid buffing their health, and then all of a sudden get these super overpowered boxes really early in the game. It's really interesting how increasing one item or changing one item completely changes another one. And when you have 36 items, it's really easy for things to get out of balance. And so yeah, luck of the draw is basically playable. I can see where you're going with this. You think I'm about to say you can play it right now on itch. And I am gonna say that, you can do that. But I also know some percentage of you out there, some hacker types have been watching carefully and thinking, <laughs> this idiot, none of his stuff is secure. I'm gonna absolutely hack this game to pieces. And you're right, it's completely insecure. There's no security here at all. But at least I kind of already thought of that. So this is how I'm going to release it so everyone can play it without me spending like another two months trying to bulletproof the code. One of the reasons I was really wanting to do all of the playtesting, other than getting in balance, is I've been slowly, I wanna say collecting data, but that sounds really bad. I've been slowly accumulating no. I've been slowly building up a database of all of the playtests and now I'm getting that whole playtest database and just pulling it down into a local file. So when you play the game, it's like you're in the playtest. You're actually playing against the playtest players and the builds that happened. Your score just isn't going up to the database with everyone else's. So that way it can go out to everyone and I don't really need to worry about hackers ruining the experience for absolutely everyone else. And I guess that's it. I've been working on this for way too long, spent way too long editing the video, so I'm gonna just end it here. Check out the description below. It has a link to the game where you can play it. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff. It actually really helps out, especially when I'm doing like a whole heap of work for literally nothing. What am I doing? And anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.